Welcome to the Wide World of Esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Knorr. Today, we're celebrating the second year anniversary of the show. And my guests are Micah Medeiros, owner of Empire Gaming, and Nathaniel Davidson and Alec, Alex Martin, players for Empire Gaming. Our topic is Empire Gaming, building an esports team. Welcome, guys. Thank you for hello. having us. Hi. All hello, right. Hello. Micah, you're the person who started this all. Tell us about it. Yeah, sure. No problem. So Empire Esports is um, right now based only in Warzone. Um, we are going to hopefully go to more titles later, but uh, we started off with Warzone. Warzone is what I grew with, um, what I kind of started my competing in. Um, and then once I decided, you know what, I'm getting a little older for competing, started to find some young talent, um, went out and, and, and found some, some talented individuals that are up and coming. Fantastic. So, uh, Nathaniel, what's your gamer tag? Uh, Reese WZ. All right. And where did that come from? Uh, Reese is my middle name, so just kind of easy. <laughs> okay. How about you, um, Alex? What's your gamer tag? My gamer tag is uh, Astro Boy Hero. Um, I'm really into music, and so I derived a little bit from it from a couple of artists that I like, and I put Hero in it just because I just felt like anybody could be their own hero, and that was kind of what I wanted my message to be, that you could just be your own hero. Okay, fantastic. And of course, Micah, if you have a gamer tag, what is it? I do. Mine is Hawaiian Tunda. Um, I actually made that when I was really young. Um, I don't even remember, uh, but I've been carrying it ever since, never changed it. So I've been Hawaiian Tunda for a long time. So I think that that's kind of normal that uh, people come up with their gamer tag when they're pretty young and then they yeah. stick with it. N Nathaniel, how old were you when you uh, created yours? Uh, I created that one about a year ago. My old ones, I just couldn't use anymore. Okay. Not really. How about one you? One good for Twitch. Right, right, right. How about you, Alex? <laughs> I think I've had mine for um, a little bit, about two years. Oh, okay. Okay. So you, they are fairly new. It's just Micah who has the, the one since he was a, a kid. Mm -hmm. So um, what what led you what was your inspiration you know for putting this group together micah yeah so um you know when i was growing up i used to watch a lot of uh, cdl so professional call of duty and um i was a big fan of optic gaming watched them i still watch them to today and that was like my my go-to even when i was Kind of feeling stressed or i needed a break um i always just watched off the gaming things from their content to their competition and you know at the time I, I wanted to compete you know i had the dreams of like okay you know one day i could join that org one day i could be something with them and then i slowly started to realize that uh i, I kind of wanted more of the ownership role i kind of wanted more to create another optic gaming if you will and in hawaii Esports was never really super big. It's never really been a, a popular thing. Um, I think a lot of people play video games casually, but as far as a professional esports organization, it wasn't a thing. And I wanted to kind of be one of the first to take an esports team that I created and me being from Hawaii and be able to make it something national or international. And that's kind of where everything began. It was that inspiration from watching Optic Gaming to today being able to have my own team, be fully licensed and, and take this, this journey. Sure, and, and you guys are in different places in the country. Where are you today, Nathaniel? I'm in Kentucky, <laughs> far away, <laughs> far away from you guys. Uh, I'm in uh, Nevada. So, so Alex, how do how do three people and I know you have more people on your team. How how do you get together from all over the country? Um, you know, that's kind of just the tricky part. You kind of just got to see who's on, maybe even schedule it if we're even that on top of it. But you just kind of got to go with the flow. Whoever's on, you know, you just kind of grab and go. 
So um, Nathaniel, have you ever um, met any of the guys on the team in person? No, I have not. <laughs> I've not met any of them. All right, but you know what? Nowadays, it seems like we we have met people because I mean, even though um, actually Micah lives pretty much next door to my office, <laughs> I feel like I've met him. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. We're neighbors. We're neighbors. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, yeah, I guess Connie O'Hare is a small place. Um, exactly. So, um, uh, Micah, what games do you play um, nowadays? So I still I still play Warzone. Um, I'm not nearly as good as these guys. I, I try and, and hang with them. I'll, I'll hop on, and if, if any of these guys are playing, I've played a little bit with Astro. I haven't played with Reese yet, but just watching them play and then getting in, it's – my my mind tells me yes, but my body says no. <laughs> so um, that's kind of what I do. I still try and play Warzone. Um, I like to keep active in the Warzone scene. I like to watch a lot of competition now in the Warzone scene. Um, if there's anything that I can take from it and share with these guys, then why not? You know, and these guys are all really good at listening, hearing me out. If I do have suggestions, uh, maybe play something a little different or or go into the game a little bit different. Um, these guys are all open years, so I try and play Warzone as much as I can still. How many um, how many people are on the Empire team? Um, so right now I'm currently at four. Um, the reason I started with four is that Warzone at the most can go quads, which is a four-man team. So I wanted to get four individuals who are passionate, um, who could put in the time and wanted to put in the time to grow. Uh, so I found these four, and there's a whole story to finding these four guys. Um, it's not easy. But I was able to find these four guys and, um, you know, we're hoping to grow eventually. But right now I want to stick with these four and, you know, put everything I can into these four guys. So, Nathaniel, for those people who have never played Warzone, can you explain it to us? Um, yeah, it's a battle royale game, kind of like a realistic version of Fortnite. That's what I tell people that uh, have never played before with no building. It's just a boots on the ground realistic fortnite in a way and ask for what is your um position in, with the team uh, as far as or, or do you have a, being a player yeah like like what is your maybe specialty strength or position <laughs> um mostly just like a running gunner i'll i'll be point man i'll 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 sniff them out for everybody <laughs> and how about you nathaniel I don't even know. That's kind of a tough one to answer in Warzone. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm pretty aggressive, so I like to have teammates that can buy me back because I do a lot of dumb <laughs> stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and I know you're pretty. Uh, your team is pretty new. So, Micah, have you played any competitions yet? Um. Yeah. So we are new. Uh, we just started in July. So really, we not even a month yet, but. Um, we have had a few competitions. Um, everything is online now, you know, with COVID and everything. So all of the competition is online. Um, <clears throat> as far as bigger tournaments, a lot of those bigger tournaments that are online are slowly kind of dwindling. Um, the state of Warzone right now isn't the best, but there's a lot of uh, hosts that will run small tournaments. So uh, all these guys have participated in the smaller tournaments. Uh, we just had a bigger organization hold a tournament again, and um, Astro was able to play in that. And uh, uh, Nathaniel here uh, has gone to a LAN. Um, he's one of the few players to say that he has competed in a Warzone LAN and he actually took first place. So um, he's the real deal. <laughs> Fantastic. So uh, Nathaniel, what was it like to uh, be in a LAN instead of uh, playing remotely? Uh, it was different. Um, definitely different playing from like your own setup because I was so used to playing on that for a year and a half and then just randomly switching to somebody else's stuff. That was definitely different, but it was really fun. It was cool playing against the people that were right beside me. It was cool. Sure. So, um, um, Alex, are you, um, uh, do you, do you mostly play at home or are you hoping to get out there in real life and, and play against <laughs> yeah, them? no, most definitely. I definitely want to be able to be part of a land. Um, I'm on the West coast. So most of the lands that uh, have come up most recently have been on the East coast, but I would love to go and just experience land, get the energy, maybe even have a crowd or whatever it looks like, but I definitely would love to be part of a land. Sure. 
So, Micah, what do you think about the ping in Hawaii and how that impacts us here? Yeah, it's ping has always been a problem. Um, and I, I don't think, and I hate to say it, but for Hawaii gamers, it'll always be difficult uh, with the ping issue. I mean, you take a game like Warzone and I can go play with with Astro who's on the West Coast and he could be playing on, you know, something as low as like a 30 or so, uh, sometimes even lower. Uh, if you move towards like Texas, these guys are playing on less than 10. Uh, at minimum, if I'm playing on a West Coast server, I'm playing on 66 or 67. Uh, if I'm playing on an East Coast server, I'm playing at about 124. So it's, it's always a disadvantage, especially with ping. Um, you know, with ping, guys who are closer and getting less ping, they're seeing things a little bit faster. And although it's just it's just really slight, it makes a big difference in a competitive game like Call of Duty. So does ping impact you at all, Nathaniel? Uh, yeah, my ping is not very good either. Because I'm kind of like, Kentucky's kind of in the middle of the east. It's kind of like, it's the west of the east. <laughs> and it's kind of in the middle. So I, I play on about 60 constantly. How about you, Alex? Um, I have fiber, thank God. So it's not too bad. Um, I got. I think my ping can get as low. If I get a West Coast lobby, I can get as low as like 19. So it's not too bad. Sure. So you might be in the better situation. There. <laughs> yeah, just, just a little bit. I'm lucky. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the future of Empire Gaming, Micah? Uh, so right now, we're, we're really focused on the Warzone scene. Um, there's a lot of things going on. Warzone 2 is coming out. A lot of people are putting their hopes into Warzone 2, saving the Warzone scene. Uh, when I say that, because everything is online, uh, Warzone has a lot of problem with cheating, with hacking. Uh, so with Warzone 2, we're hoping that anti-cheat will work. And then we're also hoping with you know COVID and protocols, uh, we'll be able to get to lands. Lands will be a big one. Uh, so that's kind of my plan with Empire is to get these guys to lands, um, let them show their talent on land where you know, we don't have these these hackers or these cheaters. We have these guys all playing there. We can see it firsthand. Uh, and I want to get these guys so that they can show their talent. Um, and like I said, with Nathaniel, you know, he's been there. So he's already proved himself that, hey, I can play on a land. And then I have no doubt that the other guys can as well. Uh, Astro's super talented. Some of our other guys, Draco, uh, Johnny, they're all very talented Warzone players. So to get all these guys out to a land will be my main priority for Empire. Uh, after that, I do want to, expand the roster a little bit. Uh, I do want to pick up more Warzone players. And then I kind of want to head into uh, Challengers, which is like the the little the one division under being professional in the CDL, the Call of Duty League. Uh, so that's where multiplayer Call of Duty. So I kind of want to pick up a Challengers squad uh, and have them play out. And then from there, uh, maybe a content team, and then slowly we'll work into other titles. Uh, I, I have been keeping my eye out on Rocket League. Uh, League of Legends, um, those, are, those are the kind of bigger venues, bigger tournaments, but, uh, you know, that's hopefully on the horizon. Sure. So, Nathaniel, how do you think gaming impacts you in other areas of your life? Uh, well, I'm a super competitive person, played sports my whole life, um, played football in college, so I just had to have something that I could do that was competitive in my life like if i'm not competing i don't i don't know like i couldn't i couldn't live without competing i gotta do so i gotta do something well that's great for your uh teammates to know how competitive you are that you just <sighs> want to win at no cost right yes i love winning <laughs> fantastic all right um so how about you alex do you feel that um that gaming gives you skills for other areas in your life um yeah most definitely i think that being a team and and understanding what you like uh, even yourself like being able to diagnose like what you need to get better a lot of self-reflection i feel like comes with competitive gaming being honest with yourself and and others like even with your teammate having to be honest with other people is is huge sure sure that makes sense i mean communication uh, yes. with your team um that would definitely help uh, you in in any kind of area of your life, Micah. What do you? What kind of uh, skills do you think are transferable in gaming to other um, areas? Um, I think one of the the biggest ones, especially for me, when I learned from from gaming, 
uh, and these guys as well is is that social skills um, more like how to talk to people how to network uh, when you play this game and you play these tournaments you're constantly joining lobbies with other people you have to talk to these strangers who you've never met and you know sometimes you have to discuss something that happened in the game hey you know there's a hacker in that game we got to reset this or whatever it may be and you're, you're dealing with a lot of personalities you know sometimes you have people that aren't very nice sometimes you have people that don't want to do something and being able to learn how to approach these people how to talk to these people um you learn a lot of social skills believe it or not from gaming so nathaniel what kind of skill you're the competitive guy do you do you want your teammates to be equally as competitive or um, do you have particular skills that you're looking for in teammates um yeah, I was. I would say just. I just want somebody that is uh as competitive as me and wants to win. If they want to win as bad as I do, then I'm perfectly fine with playing with them. <laughs> that sounds fantastic. So, <laughs> um, so, um, have you guys? And and I'll let whoever has had this this experience kind of um, answer. Have any of you had problems with like when you were younger with? Um, parents or relatives not appreciating your gaming? <laughs> Any of you guys want to take that one? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Um, I kind of grew up in a little bit more of a traditional household. They, um, you know, they wanted me to get a job and, and, and just work. Uh, construction is really what it, what it was. And I was always a, a competitive. I just wanted to compete into something, whether it was sports when I was younger. Um, and Call of Duty just really had me um, at a young, young age. And they just never understood, like, why I would yell so loud. They never understood any of it. So they would just always get on me. And I'm like, well, it's like, like life or death right here. Like, my ego is on the line, guys. You don't get it. But, um, no, I, I mean, they, they didn't really understand, like, why I was competing. Now when because obviously you got your Nick Merckx, you got your swag. Now that I'm like, look, 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 this is what I'm talking about. You need to pick your head up. They, they kind of come around now and they, they've definitely become more accepting about all of it. But at first, they really didn't get the young gamer in me. <laughs> Anyone else want to tackle that question? No, I think he covered it. I think that's a lot of um, parents. Now, nowadays, it's a little bit easier, like uh, Astra said, to to show them, you know, who, look at these people who are successful. But I mean, I, me growing up was the same way. I used to I used to have bad internet. So I would have to wait until the middle of the night on a school night and plug in the internet. And it's like, what are you doing up? Why are you gaming? You know, it's not going to get you anywhere. And it's like, well, if you look at today's world, <laughs> it will get you somewhere. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. So Nathaniel, did COVID impact your gaming at all? Um, not really, because I still worked during the pandemic. So it really didn't didn't affect mine. I still got to play the same amount. Sure, sure. Um, how about you, Micah? Uh, it was kind of the same for me. Uh, we, we had to work. So my gaming was still the same amount. But I think at the same time, it, it opened the door for gaming. So I, mean, I can appreciate it for that. Sure, absolutely. And how about you, Alex? So uh, originally, the when the when I first the pandemic had first hit, I had two weeks off, and that was the first two weeks of Warzone. Um, it definitely um, impacted into where I just I got back into gaming because I had Fortnite was kind of falling off, and I wasn't really gaming at, anymore at the time. So I think it affected it into the path where I am today. Sure. So. Nathaniel, what do you think the biggest challenges for esports athletes are? Biggest challenge? Um, sleep, honestly. <laughs> 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 I'm not kidding. Because I mean, to play at the level that some of these people play at, especially guys like us that some of us do have to work and play, like it, it's hard. It's hard to have a life outside of gaming and still play at the level that you want to play at. Like there's some weeks where I'll sleep five, six hours a week. Sure. Yeah, that's that is pretty rough, and you're trying to be healthy so you can exactly be sharp, right? So, so Alex, what do you think? What do you? Uh, uh, yeah, your... I think I think that um, time management would just probably be the biggest thing because um, uh, with becoming like a um, a competitor in any sense, 
I mean, you got to practice, you got to put in the time, you got to play the tournaments. Um, and on top of that, especially in this kind of um, uh, scene, you need to be able to like maybe do content creation or something like that. So there's a lot of different ways that just time management is probably the biggest key and all that is the biggest challenge. Well, you, you actually read my mind. The next question I had was content creation and, and streaming. So are you doing uh, a lot of that, um, Alex? Um, a little bit, a little bit. I have the TikTok, I have the YouTube. Um, I used to have an Instagram and all that stuff, but it, it's, it's, I think it's TikTok and YouTube mainly for me right now. Um, is just be a short form of content and then maybe a little bit more of a longer form. How about you, Nathaniel? Are you um, streaming your play? Yep, I got a TikTok and stream. I do both. Sure. And so, uh, Micah, are you doing any streaming or um, is that something you're not doing as the owner? Um, I have stopped. I used to stream a lot. Uh, I, I stopped. I try and go in these guys' streams and support. Uh, I can kind of tell when they're going to be on. Well, Nathaniel lives on stream, so <laughs> Nathaniel's always on. Uh, Nathaniel will stream, and when he says he sees five to six hours a week, he's not joking. Uh, I see him at streamed at 40 hours and, and just still going. Uh, Astro, I know he streams twice a day. I'll see him in the morning and at night for me. So uh, I try and just support the guys in stream now. All right, fantastic. So um, how about practice? Are you guys able to practice together, uh, Nathaniel? Uh, kind of like he said, uh, if we get on and one of us is on, we'll play. It's just, I mean, it's hard. Sure, sure. Um, so what advice would you give to young people who are interested in being players? How about you, um, uh, Alex? Um, I would just say, just have fun with it. You know, listen to yourself. You know what you need. Um, I felt like a, when I was younger, I just kind of, um, if, especially if you're trying to take it seriously, I didn't take myself seriously. So my opponents that I surrounded myself with was always just kind of my friends. I felt like the more when I took myself seriously and like, you know, the group you hang out with is who you're going to be. If you start hanging out with other people that want to be challengers, like you got to see yourself as those kind of people. Right, right. So how about you, Nathaniel? What advice would you give? Uh, kind of like you said, um, have fun, just be yourself. When you find a game that you love, then you'll know. Right, that makes sense. And Micah? Uh, I think the biggest advice, especially for, for people in Hawaii, I would say don't give up. Um, it's going to get challenging, uh, especially with, with, and I say especially Hawaii, only because of what we deal with, with paying issues and stuff like that. Uh, don't give up. It'll, it'll be hard. I promise it'll be hard. But if you just put in the time and you put in the work, uh, you'll get there. You'll get there for sure. So, Micah, a little word about Hawaii. We've seen some changes lately. I mean, there was a esports e tournament at Waipahu Library where the governor attended. That was uh, a tournament uh, between HPU and, and UH um, athletes. And, um, you know, that made a lot of news. That was a couple weeks ago. And, and we had Overwatch here at UH. Are you, with those kind of things, are you seeing there um, changes in Hawaii uh, where it's getting a little bit bigger? Uh, I, I, I see those, you know, I see a lot of the uh, collegiate esports. Uh, I think that's a big help. Uh, it's really opening the door for esports competitions here in the islands, um, especially because of our ping issues. I think land tournaments will be our, our biggest positive here in Hawaii. You know, we have Hawaii to offer. So a lot of people are going to want to play land tournaments here. And I think that will be our biggest opening into the esports scene. Um, as far as getting there, uh, I think it's a long road. Uh, one, one good example is um, in the war zone scene with online tournaments for a while, it was uh, Hawaii lobbies. They used to call them Hawaii lobbies. And, and what that meant was when people had Hawaii lobbies or they played with somebody from Hawaii, they believed that it was um, less skilled lobbies. And when I, when I first got into the war zone scene, even these bigger tournament hosts were like, oh, no Hawaii hosts. That's not a thing. Um, you know, you can't play these Hawaii lobbies. And I had to actually teach them and tell them that there's no such thing. There's no servers in Hawaii. We don't host here. We connect to a West server. We connect to an East server. We don't connect to our own server. And it took a few competitions. Um, I actually played with uh, one of the tournament organizers and just to show him that, hey, this is, this is not a Hawaii lobby that you're thinking. I'm playing 
on a West Coast lobby right now. And that's your connection as well. And it worked. You know, they removed the rule. Um, Hawaii players can host now in Warzone. So, you know, it's a big accomplishment, but I think that's just a small step. Uh, we got a lot of work to do to get lands here. Uh, once we get out of, you know, COVID and the protocols, I think it'd be really good to try and get Call of Duty here. I may be a little biased because, you know, I'm a Call of Duty guy, but Call of Duty has a big scene and it's growing. And I think it'd be great for us to get a Call of Duty event here for sure. Sure. So, Alex, have you been able to play um, with or against uh, people from other countries? Um, as well as the U.S. Oh yeah, um, a lot of um, Europe people are, or wherever they're from in the in um, the EU. I played quite a bit of them. Uh, the pings are, I, I think, I, I get like a one fifty ping when I'm over in that in their lobby. It's it's doable. It's not ideal. Um, it's not my favorite, but yeah, I have. Sure. How about you, Nathaniel? Yeah, yeah, I've played against a lot of EU people too. It's not that bad for me. I play on 110 ping when I'm on their lobbies. I'm more towards the east side. So it's not that bad, but I do like to host when EU are in my games. <laughs> sure, absolutely. Well, you know what? I'm going to give Micah the last word in terms of uh, telling us about um, where to find um, your team, yeah. Empire, and and uh, kind of... Uh, uh where you're where you're going in the near future okay cool yeah so um right now we are on social media so you can find us on instagram uh we don't use the instagram too much but we are on instagram as empire gaming uh if you go onto twitter that is our main form uh, twitter.com and it is gaming underscore empire uh and then if you go to youtube uh i host a podcast on youtube for the empire team um, it's called the Empress Podcast. So on YouTube, if you go on to Empire Gaming on YouTube, we're also there. Um, what was the other half about the question? Sorry. Oh, um, okay. So um, yeah, that's fine. And let me just um, uh, ask each of you the next tournament that you're playing, and then we'll wrap it up. Nathaniel, what's your next tournament? Um, I think there's one tomorrow. Am oh. I correct on that? Yes. And, yes. Okay. He's playing in the Empire <laughs> tournament tomorrow. <laughs> okay. And, and you're playing too, Alex? I'm actually not. I will actually be visiting one of your lovely islands in Hawaii. I will be <laughs> actually, yeah, over there. I'm leaving tomorrow morning. Oh, fantastic. So you're getting on a plane. <laughs> yes, I will be on a plane. Well, aloha. Um, aloha. <laughs> well, thank you, gentlemen. I really appreciate you being my guest today. Oh, thank, thank you for you having us. Me. Thank yeah. you for having us. Yes, thank you. All right. So uh, thank you to our viewers for joining us today. See you in two weeks. Mahalo. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.